Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to talk about how women destroy nice guys. But here's the thing. This isn't a complete explanation. And what I'm really trying to do here is to discuss a few of the variables involved to give you guys an overview of the process that's going on so that you can avoid this situation or extract yourself out of this situation, you know, to kind of like see it long before it's developing. Okay, so let me tell you what I'm talking about. The way that the world is gynocentric and the way that they tell you the world is egalitarian causes cognitive dissonance within the mind of the man because they can't both be true, all right? Now, the truth is, is that the world is gynocentric. And what I mean by that is that the female wants and needs are prioritized. Women and children first. The bulk of our society, our institutions, our laws, our values, our ethics, our morals are geared towards taking care of women, protecting them, making sure they can raise children. And it's instinctual, okay? It's part of our biology. This is what we had to do in order to survive as a species, right? The men go to war and the women stay back because you can redo the tribe. You can reproduce your tribe if you've got 10 women and one man. But if you've got 10 men and one woman, your tribe is gone. It's, it's done, okay? We, all of us, well, the majority of us, come from tribes that took care of their women and put the woman's needs, wants and needs, first above everything. And you can understand why it was done. You can understand how it was the only way that you could evolve and develop into what we've developed. Gynocentric focused on the female. Now, the practical concerns of life and reality, you know they're dealt with by men and the way that men work with things. It's not emotional. Nobody cares about your values. The world doesn't conform to your hopes and to your wishes, but rather to your efforts and your actions. And you're going to have to adjust it. Okay, so this is a very reality-based, very practical-based science, mathematics, patriarchal, competitive. You know, if your ideas don't work in the real world, you're done for. So we evolve this masculine ability and traits, okay? But if you let these male traits and tendencies run the day, it doesn't work, okay? Because it, it's too aggressive. It's too hostile. It's too warlike. It destroys the future in favor of just this, you know, uh physical force. So these male tendencies are tempered. They're controlled. And the way that they're tempered and controlled is by saying, if you want to get together with a woman, if you want to make money, if you want to get ahead and work with other people, you can't behave that way. So what the man does is he tempers all of these masculine traits in order to get together with the women, in order to please his parents, in order to get good grades, in order to get ahead at the job. This is what he has to do. He's driven through his biological imperative to get together with women. He's driven through his biological imperative to build status, to gather resources, to get together with the woman. And it is these male tendencies that will enable him to, you know, gather the resources, to outcompete his fellow man, to get ahead. But at the same time, these tendencies are being controlled because it's a gynocentric world, okay? If you go against the gynocentric aspect of this world, you're in a lot of trouble, right? It doesn't matter if a woman's right or wrong. If she starts to cry at work and you don't back off, all right? Everyone's going to look at you like you're some sort of a brute, some sort of an animal. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong because that's a woman crying. Now, you and I know, MGTOW, that she's out of line, that she's manipulating, okay? That we are in a gynocentric world, a gynocentric system, which, going, which is going to prioritize her wants and her needs, all right? But we're all going to pretend that we're all equal, but we're also going to let the men do all the heavy lifting. There's the cognitive dissonance, okay? That the, that the honest, moral, honorable young man, he can't reconcile these two conflicting ideas. We're all equal, but it's a gynocentric world that has to rely on him and use up his resources. It's very frustrating. You know what I mean? It really is like saying you're going to do twice the amount of work and you're going to get half the amount of pay. And that's the fair thing to do, right? And everybody around you is like agreeing with it, except, you know, you're like sitting there saying, what the fuck? You know, 
you're the guy who's trying to go along and do the right thing. You're the nice guy. Not not you personally, but you know what I mean? The normal man, the average man, he is the nice guy. So he's going along with this fake egalitarianism. He's going along with this idea that we're all equal. And yet, if the boat's going to sink, he's going down with the ship. There's no There's no place for him on the lifeboat. Okay. If there's really some danger out there, he's the one who's going to have to go out there and deal with it. If there's an aspect of the job where you might get killed, he's the one who's going to have to go do it. And if he says, hey, I want some extra pay for this, everybody's going to say, you're a misogynist, you're a pig. So there he is, stuck between these two ideas, all right? So you're going to do twice the amount of work today, you're going to get half the pay, and if you ever say that this is unfair, we're going to, the system's going to attack the shit out of you. You can't imagine, I get a lot of comments from guys in my comment section who talk to me about how great women are and how they're total studs, you know what I mean? And how men going MGTOW just means more women for them. And it's like, yeah, but if you've got all these women, why are you hanging out in my comment section? You know what I mean? If that's what you want, right? So it rips the man apart, you know, trying to be these two things at the same time. Now, that's the dynamic at play. There's no real reason for me to go into right now why the woman, the female, actually starts to think that her exalted position is the real thing and that she's worthy of it, you know, because she doesn't have to do the work, she doesn't have to take the chances, and every little minor complaint she has is considered to be the priority, you know, and in the meanwhile, civilization, the work, manufacturing, the security concerns of nations are just falling by the wayside right? Because you got to take care of the women folk. Things might not be perfectly fair to the women folk. So the men within the society are running around going crazy, working twice as hard as the women, getting half as much credit, being insulted for every time they say, hey, you know, I need some food too, right? I need to, I need a blanket too. It's like, oh, you misogynistic pig. So it's destroying the good men. And the only men that are reproducing are just, you know, biological pigs. That's all. They just, you know, pump and dump other men's wives, things like that. That's, you know, because they're real men. And then the single mother with, you know, the pump and dump baby from the, you know, bad boy. Guess who has to take care of it? Guess who has to foot the bill for that? You do. The nice guy. The good man. That's the dynamic. And the young man is raised the whole way through to curb, control, and temper his natural male tendencies so that they don't go too far, which is, a, you know, which is a good thing, largely, right? You know, otherwise every bigger boy would be beating up on every smaller boy. But then it goes towards this kind of female worship slavery. And you can understand it. He wants to, you know, get together. It's a biological imperative, okay? So he's a slave to his own biology. And his physiology is geared, you know, towards this whole thing. When the attractive woman is looking at him and smiling at him and saying, you know, but I need your help or blah, 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 blah. His whole biology is, you know, all of his hormone, all of his hormones, everything is, you know, uh, encouraging it. And then he's told, you know, we're equals. It's a real mind fuck. It really is. You know, it's like saying that you're going to be the captain of the ship. You're going to be the first officer of the ship. You're going to be the first mate of the ship. You're going to do all the work on the ship. You're going to be the engineer on the ship. Somebody else is going to sleep and you're going to bring them food. Okay. They're not going to know anything about running that ship and you're equals and you're going to get equal pay and you're actually taking care of them. <laughs> right. I mean, that's the truth of it. Men are actually taking care of women. This whole society, the whole civilization is built by men. The tools, the systems, they run by virtue of men. That's it. All right. And then you want to say we're equals? I can raise my voice and turn a person's. So the men and the women, they're not equal. They're not equal in their requirements, bio, you know, biological requirements. They're not equal in, on any level. And yet, and the man is raised, you know, to temper and to curb back all of his masculinity, most of it. And he's told that he's going to have to do all the sacrificing, all the building, all of the working. And he's told that we're equals and that he's being, you know, a misogynistic jerk because he wants to get paid extra for the dangerous work and for the extra work. So the man is trapped where... He wants to fulfill his biological imperative. He wants to get laid. He wants to build a family. He wants to be a strong man. He wants to be a man in the traditional sense, traditional masculinity. You know, that's what he's been taught is what it means to be a man, okay? 
And then you say to him that, no, all of those things that you want, they make you a misogynistic pig. See, traditional masculinity has been destroyed. What a man is has been destroyed. And I know that a lot of you are thinking, but Howard, I'm a good guy, you know, and I don't want anything from anybody and I'm just going to leave these bitches alone. Can't I just go about my life and build up my life and have a good life? And the answer is no, not really. No, you can do everything right. You can be a good guy. You can cause no trouble and bad people and troublesome situations will still come after you. It's unfair. Usually the better you are and the more virtue you have, the more trouble that will come your way. But, it, it, you know, it's possible. Of course, I mean, that's the goal, that you take care of yourself, you build up your own life, you get strong. But it's this psychological bullshit combined with, you know, your, your basic male biology. Thing is, though, is you can take control of your biology to a large degree, right? You can, you can work out. You can get your hormones in order. You can get your life in order. You can keep women in their proper place within your mind. See, that's part of it too. The idea that the women are knocked up and held up to this, <laughs> no pun intended there, uh, to this exalted status, you know, of this princess that the man has to worship and that he's got to work for and that he has to sacrifice for and that he better not say no to and he better prioritize her wants and her needs as the whole civilization does. Oh, but we're equals. He's going to do all the work. She's going to get half the pay, but we're equals. All of the danger, all of the stress, all of the problems are going to be put upon the man. None of them are going to be put upon the woman, but, but we're equals. So you see, it's this dichotomy, it's, it's this cognitive dissonance, which rips the men apart, right? You can't understand it. So the truth is, is no, you're a man, she's a woman. You're designed for taking chances, for building things, for fighting, for overcoming obstacles, for dealing with reality. She's designed for, um, you know, having children, taking care of them. And this role that you want to fulfill, this traditional male role, which, you know, biologically we are driven to fulfill, has been shamed, has been co-opted. It's been slandered. So just this average good guy who's trying to, you know, just get by in life, he's getting ripped to pieces. And the backstabbing scumbags who really have no values, who have no vision, yeah, they're doing pretty good at your expense. Are you still worshiping the woman? Look, she can be as beautiful as beautiful is, all right? But she's still just a person. And if she's got no character and no values, she's going to rip you to pieces, no matter how beautiful she is. And there is this tendency, this genetic tendency that the men have to sacrifice, to fulfill the traditional male role. So I hope this gives some insight. I mean, I know it's not like a complete explanation as to what's going on, but I want the good guys to be able to protect themselves and to build themselves up into strong men before they become sidetracked and used up and abused by women in society. So just remember, you know, it's a gynocentric system and they're pretending that it's an egalitarian system, okay? And egalitarianism is complete bullshit. A man who's six feet tall and a man who's four feet tall are not equal. I'm sorry. A man with 150 IQ and a man with 75 IQ, they are not equal, all right? A woman who can only do so much work and who has certain emotional concerns and certain biology and a strong, fit, healthy man with lots of experience, they are far from equal. You know what I mean? It's like, well, who do you want to be in charge here? <laughs> it's like, well, you know, do you, want to, do you want to get through this situation? Do you want to survive this situation? Then you're going to put a strong, experienced man in charge. I'm going to leave it at that for now, okay? There's a lot more I could say on this subject and related subjects, but let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.